Welcome back to this week's edition of Before the Bell. That's Nick Kalikas. I'm Frank Trigg. This week, UFC 193, Rousey versus home. Uh, Rousey, obviously, number one fighter, female fighter in the world, number one female fighter in the weight class, highest paid athlete in the UFC. Um, right now, the, the golden child of fighting. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous how big and how quick she's, she's come on the scene. But deservedly so. Co-main event, it's almost as bad as the main event for me. I don't see these fights being very competitive either way. Um, I think that the champs are going to remain the champs, and the champs are going to win these fights very easily. The co-main event is uh, the champion, uh, Joanna Yurchik, fighting uh, Valerie Lachino. Um, I really don't see a way that Valerie can win. Valerie's got a good right hand, don't get me wrong. The right hand, she can use it any, any way she wants to. Uppercut, hook, straight, like however she wants to use it, but... Against someone like Joanna, eh? Am I wrong? Am I? Am I? See, are you seeing something different? Well, it's it's crazy because both of these ladies that you're talking about in the main event in uh, the co-main event, like the underdogs, are, are talented fighters. I mean, and, and they're honestly kind of top of the food chain in their, their divisions. But yeah, for example, Laterno, since we're starting there, I mean, she's a striker, like you said. She does have some power in her right hand. She has good knockout power period her striking skill is, is very good i even like her kicking game i mean she's very effective with her high kicks she could do some damage um the problem is she's facing a better striker and your j check i mean that's what you're seeing there and what she's shown last time laterno she looked great against miraz but she got tagged a few times in that fight uh, you know just imagine if, if you know her now against a better striker that has power has that killer instinct uh it's just not really going to bode too well for her, I think, is how, you know, and it, it's unfortunate because it's a crazy line. I mean, right now it's minus 2,000 for Jacek, and the comeback is plus 1,250 for, <laughs> for Letourneau. Oh, and it's my that up. gosh, are you serious? Yeah, and the crazy thing is I opened it at 1,450, 1,425-ish uh, for both lines, and they've been up, been bet up to 2,000, so uh, didn't open them high enough. I mean, it doesn't matter. I guess if I opened it 2,000, it'd be 2,500 right now. It wouldn't yeah. matter too much, but um, yeah, it's, it's kind of insane. Definitely. Well, so obviously it's a dog or pass because the numbers are so high, and it's like why not why not just drop ten bucks and see what happens? Like at this point, it doesn't really make a difference. Yeah, and the sports books are obviously going to be hoping that uh, <laughs> that happens as well. Well, but you know what? They are going to get some dog action on fight day. Guarantee it. There'll be some max bets coming in because people are going to with large bankrolls are going to take a stab. You know, they're going to come in and say, "Hey, at this line, you never know. Everybody's got a puncher chance in the sport, especially you know it's not like they're not." bums they're talented fighters that deserve a title shot in most cases so you know they're going to be getting some action on the dogs no doubt so i'm not even shocked to see the line drop down on fight day i think that's what's probably going to happen for both ladies um ronda rousey's going to drop and not be as such a crazy favorite and the same thing for uh jay check I, I don't know his name but the guy that won 2.5 million on the uh, world series he bet the royals in the beginning of the season won 2.5 million has come out and said he's putting a ton of money down on, on holly home uh, as the underdog now Let's understand what's a ton of money, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. If you just won two point five million, what is a hundred thousand? What is two hundred thousand in the whole scope of things? And really, it's kind of worth the risk if you won it one time by picking Kansas City to win the whole thing early in the season. It's kind of worth it from that mindset of that kind of dollar amount. But for the normal better, for the, for the guy that the, the, the guy that the blue collar worker, the guy that's only got maybe a couple hundred dollars this weekend to spend betting, where should he lay his money on this co-main event? It is tough. I mean, it, you know, it's one of those situations that there's a lot of fights on this card. I would say look somewhere else on the card, honestly. I mean, it's just it's very tough because I think Letourneau does end up getting caught, knocked out possibly. I mean, I hope it's a war and, you know, these girls go five rounds and we see, you know, something significant. But it is hard to actually recommend a bet on uh, either dog, even though, you know, just to throw a flyer on there. Like you said, if it's something that if you have an extra 10 bucks and you want to throw, you know, a flyer on each dog, I can understand it. But as far as a serious play goes, I mean, you got to expect to lose your money on the, on the underdogs here, you know, either way. So it's just tough. I, I wouldn't recommend anything. I did read uh, what you read. I think it was on MMA junkie. And they said that it was like what 10 K or something that the guy is going to throw down. Um, yeah. And I mean, after you, like you said, 2.5 million, now you're going to throw 10 K. Yeah. That's nothing for him. That is a $10 bet right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So I can understand it. And he's hoping that, you know, he gets that lucky puncher's chance and, and you know, he's going to keep betting, I guess. And that's what people said. I think I read in that article that he'll just keep on betting until she loses because eventually she, she, he thinks she's going to get caught. Rousey we're talking about, right? So, 
yeah, if you do that, yeah, it maybe eventually it pays off because of, of the price on you know Ronda Rousey's fights are ridiculous. Like this line, I mean, it's pretty consistent. You're going to see her as a huge favorite. So, yeah, I mean, crazier things have happened. You know, I mean, maybe it's something goes down and she gets popped. So here, here's my mindset: to beat Joanna, you have to be great at submission. You got to get her to the ground, and you got to. She, she defended that. Um, I think Gaeta put her in a in a arm triangle. And she got out of it, but it was it was horrible. Like the way she got out of it was completely wrong. She just kind of got out of it. Um, so you got to be here by submission. The only way to beat Rousey is by knocking her out. The best striker they have right now in the division is Holly Holm, who she's fighting. But Holly Holm, I, I've called some of her fights uh, when I was doing sports broadcasting for female boxing. She's not a finisher. She she beats girls up for the entire fight. She's a decision maker in boxing, and you're not going to be able to, to decision someone like Ronda Rousey in MMA. You have to be able to finish her. Right now, Holly Holm is ranked ninth in, 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 the, in the ranking system. Obviously, Ronda Rousey is ranked one. There's so many other girls in the middle there that could have been. I don't know to say if any of the girls would be any better matchups for Ronda because it's Ronda Rousey. It, there's just no one really at the weight class. I've been saying for over a year and a half now, Ronda is five years ahead of everybody else in the division. She's just that much better than everybody else. There isn't really a better matchup. Would a Misha Tate fight be any better than a Holly Holm fight right now? I think it would be more competitive somewhat. I mean, it depends. We'll see how it plays out. But, yeah, I mean, Tate's proven that, you know, she can go out there and, and survive at least and not get beat in the first round against Rousey. And, and people can say what they want. Rousey won that fight handily, and, they, you know, and she probably would again. So I know that people don't want to see the same fight over and over again and see Tate lose quite a bit. But still, I think Tate still gives Rousey the best challenge she's had. Now, maybe Holm comes in here stays away, uses her distance like a lot of people think, and uh, can extend this fight a little bit. But it's hard for me to believe that eventually she doesn't get, you know, clinched up and, and get taken down. And then once on the ground, it's pretty much a wrap, you know. So I'm hoping, again, it would kind of extend and go uh, further because everybody bets the unders in these fights, too. You know, that's the other thing, especially with Ronda Rousey. Um, so they're, they're all going to come in. We're getting starting to see a little bit of action come back in on the over right now because some people do have that mindset, like maybe home can use her footwork and keep her distance long enough to, you know, survive a little bit. It was minus 400. I, that's where I said it originally, and it was just a few days ago, too. It's been betting, uh, It's been getting bet back and forth, up and down a little bit. It was minus 400 on under one and a half rounds. Um, and now it's sitting at, looking over at Don Best's screen, it's minus 300. So it's it's come down about 100 cents or so. Line margins tightened up a little bit. Um, but they are seeing some action on the over, which is good because there'll be a little bit more balance on that fight. And I do think, like I said, I mean, seven and a half minutes – it's a long time to go with Ronda Rousey, especially if, if you hit the floor. I mean, that's that's a whole different story as well. So, I mean, Holmes going to have to do her best to stay upright and try to not uh, get taken down and try to utilize her strength, which is striking. She definitely has a striking advantage um, over Rousey, but Rousey hits harder. I mean, like you just said, you know, I mean, Holm is a, probably the more technical boxer for sure. Her stand-up game overall, I mean, her kickboxing is good. Everything about her stand-up game is good, but she doesn't have that vicious one-punch one, one knockout power. Rousey's starting to develop that. So even on the feet, I think Rousey's going to have a better shot even uh, standing up and striking than, you know, Holm will have on the ground with Rousey as well. So Rousey, she's going to be tough to beat. I mean, regardless, that's why you're seeing these lines. That's why everybody's in love with her as far as, I mean, sh how dominant she is, um, you know, how popular she's getting. She's doing a lot of other things. She's becoming more mainstream. So a lot of people are, are just all over Rousey right now. And it's, I mean, she deserves it. She's amazing. Well, the only the only side note to this to this whole Rousey affair right now, and obviously just so everybody knows at home, from a betting standpoint, I'm leaving both these fights alone. It makes no sense for me to put any kind of money anywhere on these things. I'm just going to throw a party and everybody come over to the house and watch it on pay-per-view and sit there and, and drink a bunch of tequila and have fun with this one, not having any bets laid out pretty much anywhere in the card. I've kind of left this entire fight card alone. Uh, why, I don't know. It's just like for, the, for my internal feeling was like there's no fights on here I really want to play any games with. I don't feel like there's any value in the ones I wanted to bet. Like the way I really thought I should bet was going to be a lot of the favorites. I didn't see any value in it, so I'm kind of leaving it alone. Is that the same way you're kind of looking at this whole card as well, and specifically the co-main and the main event? Yeah, for sure, the co-main and main event. I don't think I'm going to be taking any you know stabs at anything there. But uh, and like I said, the the prelims, you know, there's definitely some, or even the main card. There's there's some spots on this card that maybe you could look at and, and say there might be a better two to make. But I don't blame you, man. I mean, a lot of times, a lot of people try to force things. A lot of people try to uh, to make a play where it's not. I mean, I've done. Everybody's guilty of it in the past. You know, I've done it as well. But it is important to try to stay disciplined. And like you said, even if it's the entire fight card, if you got if you there's nothing that you really see that stands out or there's any value, then 
you just move on, especially with how much MMA there is these days. You know, you're going to find even next week, for example, you know, you're going to find some spots where you might have a better price or better fighter that, uh, you know, is getting a little bit undervalued or underappreciated by the fans. You could take a stab that way. So, yeah, I think it's the way to go is just sit back and watch them. I mean, you have two of the best ladies and I didn't mention the line, but the Rousey line is the same, actually. Minus 2000 against Holly Holm plus 1250. So both lines you are seeing huge favorites, but it's probably better. Just appreciate what you're witnessing. And and both these ladies are going to be, you know, dominant champions probably for a long time. Um, so it's it's pretty neat to see it in that aspect. And even though, you know, might not have – action always makes the fights more intriguing, right? I mean, everybody, you know, betting on it or whatever. But these are the two type of fights. They're high favorite lines, and they're still going to be intriguing in my opinion. You know what I mean? Even with no action on it, people are going to want to watch these fights. So that says a lot. And I'm glad that the UFC kind of set this fight up with having their, you know, their two standout ladies – you know, uh, main event, co-main event. I think that's pretty cool. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, a quick bit of news for the for the folks at home. If you missed it, uh, Merkel Krokop, the most ex- one of the most exciting fighters coming out of Pride, has failed his drug test. The first guy to fail uh, the the Wasada test, Usada testing, and is now pulled out of his fight and retired in uh, in his fight in Korea. Which brings us into now another. You know, she she has failed in the past, but now she's been clean for a couple of years. Is uh, uh, Christina Santos Cyborg, who's now assigned with the UFC. But at 45, you know, at an upper weight class, Misha Tate comes out today, because we're still talking about the girls, uh, or yesterday, excuse me, that Ronda moved to 35 when, this, when the when serious talks got together with Cyborg. And I was just like, oh, i got to change weight classes. And now, at, rightfully so, she's forcing Cyborg to come down to her at 35, not them meeting in the middle someplace at 40. From a betting standpoint, knowing now how strict the testing is and catching a guy like like Crow Cop, who, who was, you know, one of the most superior guys and, and made a mistake trying to fix his shoulder, and now his has pretty much tarnished his reputation uh, as a whole uh, uh, from his entire career with a person like Cyborg who was caught in the past and now has been proven she's being clean. And it, it does now with, with UFC signing her, there is a, a huge potential for her and Rousey to meet at 135. From an odds-making standpoint, will this will that line be as, as crazy as the line we're seeing this week with home? No. You know, well, we put the line out there before as well. Um, and it's actually, I'm not sure if it's up currently right now. It might be at some places, but it was under two to one, believe it or not. I mean, so that tells you how much respect Cyborg gets. And rightfully so there too. Outstanding. I mean, uh, she is a dominant striker, the type of girl that, I mean, she's got so much power. I mean, look what she's done on her resume. She just, she knocks everybody out. So you have somebody that's superior to everybody thus far in MMA, at least. I know kickboxing, she suffered a loss not too long ago. Um, Cyborg did. But, I mean, MMA, she hasn't, I mean, even come close. She's gotten better and better. She's hard to take down. She has a tremendous amount of knockout power. So she is a challenge. Because if Rousey cannot get Cyborg down, I mean, on the feet, you know, she, there's a good chance that uh, Cyborg does catch her. So, yeah, you got to give Cyborg a lot of respect in, in most people's minds, too. I mean, outside of Rousey's quickly closed the gap and surpassed Cyborg. But just a couple years ago, it was Cyborg at the top of the food chain. And Rousey was kind of a lot of people thought that Cyborg would beat her, you know, hands down. Now all that has switched because Rousey's getting better and better and improving. And she's proved that she is the best fighter in the world. So now that's kind of changed a little bit, but either way, it is going to be a lot more competitive line. The sports books will draw a lot of action um, both ways here. So around two to one or so was a line. Now, if that fight actually takes place, we'll have to look at things a little bit closer, you know, and, and probably come out with a, a little bit more of an accurate number. But um, as of right now, yeah, definitely. That would be the only spot that, that you're going to see Ronda Rousey not be an enormous favorite right now. Well, there you have it. There's another before the uh, before the bell. And I'll be honest with you, Nick. This 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 weekend has got to be tough on you, especially these lines. You know, trying to open them up the right numbers, and and but then it gets to a point right for you where it doesn't matter. Like you said earlier, you could open up at two thousand; it would have been better for twenty five hundred. It's yeah. just one of those deals. Is it hard sometimes writing lines? We have guys like that are polarizing, like Rousey. And McGregor, where they're, they're so polarizing that people are going to bet up, bet them up, no matter what you do. It is true. Yes, it is. It's. It, I mean, it's. It's just hard to imagine because sometimes you can't. You can't really say, you know, is fourteen fifty going to keep enough to keep people off there? And it's not. Obviously, it didn't work that way. Or is uh, like Conor McGregor right now? I mean, he's a decent favorite over uh, Jose Aldo. Not nothing ridiculous. I mean, it's still a competitive line, but he's favored over the champ. You know what I mean? And and a lot of people would be surprised by that. But it's a lot of the popularity, a lot of the hype that surrounds him. I mean, look, the guy is right there with Rousey as far as the draw for the UFC right now. It's amazing, and he could throw. I mean, the guy is definitely talented on the feet. Um, he has a big win over Mendez, which which was impressive as well. So the guy has a legit shot to pull that fight off as well. I'm not counting him out at all, but it's amazing that he's favored over somebody like Jose Aldo, which has been 
let's not forget now, too, that Chael Sonnen has just put out with his contacts in Brazil that Jose may not be making it to the fight. He might not He might not be coming through now all of a sudden. It's, it's just rumored. No one really knows. And, and, but the one thing that Chael did say, where there's smoke, there's always fire in MMA. It's one of those weird sports where if you see a little bit of smoke, you know for sure it's about to happen one way or the other. And the rumor is that, that Jose might not make the fight. And that's what connor has been saying the entire time. That which becomes another problem because when the champ is now ducking the challenger, what do you do? Do you strip the, ch- the champ and give the belt to the challenger right away? Or do you have to strip the belt and go, okay, the next two challengers and have to battle it out for the, who's going to be the champ? If that is accurate, you imagine how furious Dana is going to be in crew. Wow. I mean, oh, he'll, cut just him. Gonna... he'll cut him. He'll, he'll be fired. Like, Joe's going to be out. He'll be out. Let's not forget, too, he's very vocal about the Reebok deal. Um, uh, uh, him and, and Vitor and some other ones have, have lost a, a lot of money down in Brazil. Um, one of their companies has actually just left the UFC, has pulled away to the Reebok deal. So Jose's been very vocal about the Reebok deal. Then he's going to pull out for the second time from this fight. Yeah, th- th- I think I have to understand, I have to say that this will be the end of his his UFC career if this happens. I'll be mad at him as a fan. Yeah, a lot of fans are going to be upset. And I think, and you know what the craziest thing is? I think after the Mendes fight, uh, Aldo got a little bit confident. I mean, and I know that sounds crazy, right? But Mendes was landing on McGregor. I mean, on the feet, he was landing. McGregor showed a great chin. I mean, so that's one thing that impressed me about that. But at the same time, McGregor, I mean, he looked human a little bit because he was getting tagged by Mendes. He was getting in there and landing. And at the same time, even though the performance from McGregor on the feet was very impressive, I still think it, it gained gave Aldo a, a little bit more confidence seeing that, uh, you know, he was able to get taken down. I know he was hurt in that fight and people can say what they want, but still, I honestly think even though he was impressive in his win, I think Aldo had a little bit of a relief in some ways. I, I, maybe I'm totally wrong, and I think he gained a little bit of confidence that way. But like you said, as the fight gets a little bit closer, all those mental games that McGregor plays with them, and you know, and out there being the underdog now, uh, people doubting you, thinking that McGregor's going to beat you as well, it might come into play. So he, I don't know. I hope I don't think I think Aldo is the type of warrior that wouldn't back out unless there's something going on. But you never know. I mean, mine's games are you know sometimes i mean you probably know better than i do obviously about this stuff and when it comes to fighters but i mean mental the mental aspect of the game is just as important you know what i mean as actually going out there and and having the skill set to do it i I will say this uh uh, chris weidman and his camp were the only ones that believed that he would ever beat anderson silva but he believed it two years before he even got the call up he started fighting specifically to beat anderson silva that was his his mindset the mental game is the biggest part of the game now. And that's the reason why women like uh, 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 Joanna Jurczyk and, and Ronda Rousey are the champs of their weight classes because they might have some holes in their game, technically speaking, but their mental game is so strong. You can't, you can't trash talk them. You can't you know, get into their skin. You can't push any buttons on them. They know exactly how to, how to keep everything squared away. Once that cage door short, shuts and the referee asks, are you ready, are you ready? And it's you know, time to fight. That's it. They're ready to go. And they're mentally prepared. That, that's, the, that, that's what keeps them ahead. Of everybody else, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that that is, you know, to, to master the mental end of it, it, it's huge. And you're right, those two ladies definitely have it. Now, Aldo, we're not sure, man. I mean, it, I'm not, you know, it just seems like he doesn't right now. That's for sure. He, you know, McGregor's he, he definitely def- in his he's head. He's definitely feeling McGregor's, he's definitely feeling the head games. For sure from McGregor, yeah. 100%. Yeah. So. Well, that's it for this edition of Before the Bell. That's Nick Kalikas. I'm Frank Trigg. We'll see you again next week.